wanted to do this video to share with you what I think are some of the best riding roads in Victoria. Being from New South Wales, our knowledge won't be as good as the local Victorians, who would of course ridden a lot more roads. I wanted to keep the list to 30, and there's a bunch of roads that sort of should have been included but didn't make the cut, and this is the list of them here. And of course, Arthur's Seat, it's only four kilometres long, so I thought that was too short. But uh, yeah, look, there's a bunch of roads there that I really did enjoy as well. Start off with Grand Ridge Road is number 30, and it's 132 kilometres along the ridge of the Streslihe Ranges. I wanted to include this in the list, even though about half of it is unsealed or gravel, because for the last couple of years we've been riding dirt roads, so it's still a great ride, if, particularly the bitumen parts, and this is a video is about the bitumen roads. I'm going to include the wild card of the Monaro Highway as number 29, and that's because from the border, New South Wales border, it immediately goes to sweepers for the next 44 kilometres down to Can River. The Gibson region really has some great riding, and the Corumburra Warrigal Road is one of the examples. Now, it can get a bit of traffic on this one, so that's why it is a little bit lower on the list. And we rode it long enough to see its quality and to know there'll be plenty of other roads in this area that we still haven't ridden. Our number 27 is Dargo Road and unfortunately this was a day when the video, well I must have been pressing the button wrong because instead of taking video it did frames but anyhow, uh, yeah look this is a great ride, for a lot of people it's out and back, for bitumen it's out and back and it, it, the Glenadale to Dargo is great riding. Number 26, and it's going to be the ride from Eildon to Alexandra, and this is along Skyline Road for the climb, and then New Tea Creek Road for the descent and on the way down to Alexandra. Now there is a Lake Eildon lookout on Skyline Road. Number 25, Yarra Junction, Nuji Road, and this is a great 20 kilometre section from Powell Town to Piedmont. The area has pretty good scenery, great quality surface, and can get the occasional few cars that shouldn't really put too much of a dampener on the ride. It also features plenty of nice sweepers. Scenically, the Great Ocean Road is up there with the best, and many journalists rank it as one of Australia's best roads. Well, I don't think it is. I particularly hate the traffic on it and how sometimes it can be so slow. But that said, there is a particular section which I think is absolutely fantastic. And that's this section between Lavers Hill and Marengo near Apollo Bay. It's an 80 km hour zone where you'll enjoy some nice sweepers and scenery. We ride number 23 when we go from Tlangeta to Mount Beauty and we do it as an out and back road from Runny Creek to Happy Valley Road. It's a superb surface which climbs up over the mountain and then descends. When we get down towards the bottom, we turn around and ride the 14 kilometres again in reverse. It's like riding two great roads. The great riding is between Cancuna and Rosewhite, and you could continue on further if you were heading to Myrtleford or Beechworth. Now the order of these roads isn't perfect and it'd be easy to switch any of them around but the number 22 I've got Heidelberg King Lake Road from St Andrews to King Lake. Problem with this road is although the surface and the twisties are fantastic every time we've gone up it's been a bit of traffic with terribly slow cars. If you get a good run, you can expect about 11 kilometres of very enjoyable riding.
We're staying in the same area for number 21, the Hillsville King Lake Road. Now, this has got a great section, and I call it the Chum Creek Road. It's around the Chum Creek where it's spectacularly good. Interestingly, on this particular day with the footage, it was light rain and, as you can see, plenty of fog. But that didn't seem to concern us too much. And on and on this ride, we're heading down towards Hillsville. It's a much better ride going up, of course, but uh, great in both directions. We published the YouTube video on this ride the, in February 2023 and it was the Hillsville Marysville Loop, one of the best days of riding that you could possibly do. Still in the Yarra Valley region, we've got number 20 Lake Mountain Road. This is an up, out and back, 10 kilometres each way, so it's a 20 kilometre ride whichever way you look at it. So it's a climb up from Camberville to Lake Mountain Resort. Great riding, beautiful scenery, yes, and it can get a little bit foggy too. I'm a big fan of number 19, Shelley Road. That's probably because we only ride the 11 kilometre section from Guy's Forest to Shelley, or Shelley to Guy's Forest. And there is a Guy's Forest Road dirt section that we generally take. Shelley Road between Walwa and Guy's Forest is come for a bit of criticism lately and that's because it's a, well it's a straight road anyway but uh, lots of potholes and yeah it's still worth it to ride this twisty section. I've only put the Great Alpine Road at 18 now that could be anywhere much higher it could be in the top 10. The road is a long road and so, you know, it goes through townships so yeah that's not the, obviously over Hotham is beautiful spectacular and always really well looked after so that's great riding um, you can get traffic on it the eastern part of the Great Alpine Road used to be one of my favorite roads out near Bruthen or from Bruthen towards Omeo and well, between Mount Hotham and Omeo, fantastic riding. So yeah, really, it should be scored much higher than number 18. But anyway, get out there and enjoy it. The Great Alpine Road really needs to be broken into at least three sections. And this little bit of footage here is the eastern section uh, heading out from Bruthen. It's great riding along the Tambo River. Number 17 is the Deans Marsh Lawn Road. And this is a good road to ride if you can get a good run. If you don't get any traffic, you'll enjoy a great 22 kilometer ride. If you get a good run, the Black Spur is spectacular. Absolutely beautiful, great surface, lovely scenery, and really good to ride either up or down, providing there's no traffic. The road is the Maroondah Highway, and this is the 22 kilometer section between Hillsville and Narbathong.
Number 15 is another road we didn't do any footage on, and it, it's certainly a great road, Mount Victory Road at Halls Gap. It's Halls Gap to Zumsteen's past Mackenzie Falls, so you definitely want to stop at Mackenzie Falls if you ride this road. It is a fantastic road. Inside the top 15, you could swap the order around any way you like, but number 14, I've gone for Ballara Merbu North Road. Gee, every road around Merbu North is pretty spectacular, but uh, this road, well, it did have a bit of dirt on it from vehicles dragging it on, but and some of the section when we rode it on this occasion was resurfaced as well. But it's a fantastic ride, and this was into Merbu North. Number 13 was the day we, from the Dargo ride, where the GoPro got messed up, but this road, Terralgon, Balut Road, is absolutely sensational. The GoPro actually shot all the footage for the day in time-lapse mode, so it's uh, not actually video. So I'll just let it run as standard speed and you can see a bit of the road. Yet another spectacular Victorian road, Tawonga Gap Road between Mount Beauty and Bright, or from Mount Beauty to the Great Alpine Road. It's a road that I just look forward to riding every time we go down that area. TJ won't be impressed with this, but I've only put Grenya Road at number 11. It probably could, look, they could all be higher, I think, but I, Grenya Road is absolutely fantastic. Up over Mount Grenya and back down again, twisties all the way. It's about 12 kilometres, Bulio to Grenya, and yes, great riding. Gee, number 10, I don't know why it's so low, La Cole Road. To stay on bitumen, you've got to do it out as an out and back, and that'll give you 44 kilometer each way. So from Glen Maggie to La Cole and turn around and go back, you've got an 88 kilometer ride, and 88 kilometers of just fantastic scenery, great road. Yeah, it's, it's really up there. One of the interesting things about La Cola Road is that the environment changes quite a lot. The scenery, it changes a lot to different types of areas that you're in as you go along the road over that 44 kilometre distance. It has tighter sections, sweepers. It follows the McAllister River for a lot of the way. The surface is really good. This would have to be a road that everyone should be riding. Back to the Yarra Valley and we've got Myers Creek Road. There's so many great roads around Hillsville, Mary, Marysville area. And Myers Creek is one of the climbs away from Hillsville which seems to get the least amount of traffic. It's got plenty of overtaking spaces, it's quite open, not all tight, a lot of beautiful sweepers, it's a very nice ride. It's 15 kilometres from Hillsville up to Tulangi and this road is good to ride in either direction. You'll enjoy riding it either up or down.
and the scenery is typical of the area, a lot of tropical ferns. For number eight, we're heading back to the Otways for Skeens Creek Road. I really love this road. From Skeens Creek all the way up to Forest is a great ride and there's a really good cafe at Forest. A lot of people ride the Great Ocean Road and they miss all these off-roads uh, like this particular road here in the Otways and you know you can go loops there's plenty of uh, rides you can do in the area you can t make a left off this and do Turton's track and wrap back around and head up to Colac there's so many great rides in this area Skeens Creek Road was the, the highlight of this particular day's riding where we started over at Mount Eliza and took the Sorrento Ferry. We met the couple who's in front of us here at uh, the petrol station when we were refuelling and they were telling us how they were on their way to Tasmania for a ride so I'm sure they would have enjoyed that. Seven to go and maybe I'm a bit bias towards the Marysville area so I've put down Marysville Wood Point Road as number seven. Great in both directions again there is a lookout a little bit further up the road from Marysville which is before the Lake Mountain Turn. Fantastic surface, can get debris after heavy winds and does get significantly tighter up past the Lake Mountain Turnoff. After the climb, the road does narrow and it becomes more like a rainforest area. Number six, now we're talking Falls Creek, we're talking Mount Beauty, great area for riding, side of the cliff, mountainous, ski areas. Yeah, Bogong High Plains Road. Always love this particular section up to Falls Creek. Wasn't too fussed on it from Falls Creek up to the WTF corner or up to Omeo Highway but since they've resurfaced part of that road particularly the bit after Falls Creek it's a great ride too now. This section between Mount Beauty and Falls Creek 30 kilometres of delightful riding. Yes the road has been closed in the past from landslides and the Falls Creek area also becoming a big mountain bike area. Number five, Whitfield Mansfield Road. Well, a couple of years ago it was a 100 km an hour speed limit and now it's been dropped to 80 and I always thought roads are a bit safer when they're 100. You don't tend to look at the speedo and you can concentrate on the road more. From Whitfield you get plenty of sweepers, in fact the road's full of sweepers for quite some while before it starts to tighten up a little. It's a 62 km run and if you don't get too much traffic you'll really enjoy that ride. The road also seems to cross from one side of a mountain to the other so on some stages you've got the edge of the mountain on your left and others the edge of the mountains on the right. I had to think about this and I put Eildon Jamison Road at number four. Why did I put it at number four? Probably because it's very, very light traffic. Most of the time you can ride it and not have many cars on it at all. The problem with it can be the debris. It, we've ridden it when there was heavy winds overnight and there was too much debris to practically ride on. So that wasn't good, but that's only been once. So that was all right. The fact that you're riding for 58 kilometers and 
I guess sometimes on this road I'm looking for a bit of a straight section for a rest because this does seem to be one of the most tiring roads. There are some sections which are quite monotonous where you're going right and then you're right into the mountain on the sharp right turn and then out to the edge for a left and back and it just goes one after another. So yeah, it can be tiring. Putting it from the Jamison side, it can be nice to have a rest at Lake Yildon. I guess number three has become one of the most popular roads of recent because they eventually have sealed that 12 kilometres of gravel that had been gravel for so many years, forever. And uh, Bonang Road, people call it Bonang Highway, it's Bonang Road I'm pretty sure. Bonang Road, the infamous 105 kilometre of twisty sign. Not bad when you've got a 112 kilometre ride from the New South Wales border around Delegate to Orbist. Now the Bonang Road is a logging truck road, so you do have to be careful if you see any trucks around. You'll also notice that the surface changes, sometimes it's a concrete surface, sometimes it's a bitumen. It's not a perfect surface and you'll notice it's often very patchy. I'd always suggest if you're going to ride this road to do it in the morning. You know, typically we head south, we might leave from Bombala or Jindabyne, that's not a problem at all. Kuma, they're all fine dis distances. But uh, riding north, I've done it a few times, but in each of those occasions, I've ridden it in the afternoon and I've found it very, very tiring. I've listed the Reefed and Spur at number two. Woods Point Road, Reefton Spur, 20 kilometres of magnificent riding. Fantastic surface, except for if the night before there's heavy winds, you'll find there's debris all over the road. These trees will just have tree litter everywhere. And I've ridden in that and that was not real good. particularly love it riding up but you know riding down is still a really great ride. I mentioned earlier that the Hillsville Marysville loop ride we did in January 23 was a fantastic ride and one of the reasons for that was that we did down the Reefton Spur and back up again in the same ride. It's another Yarra Valley ride. You get to the top T intersection and you've got the turn left to Marysville. One of my favorite areas. Anyone who rides Victorian roads knows that I haven't mentioned the Omeo Highway. And yes, I've listed the Omeo Highway as the number one road in Victoria because I think it's the number one road in Australia. All of the 162 kilometres of the Omeo Highway from Tlangala to Omeo is a great ride. But of course most people acknowledge the 107 kilometre section from Mitamita to Omeo. I really feel the road is very well looked after and maintained. It goes through different sections again, different scenery, follows the Mitamita River and the, there's different surfaces in hot weather you can see some melting of the surface in the corners which we've seen a number of times over the years but uh, this is one spectacular road which will make you tired if you're not very fit. On a ride between Omeo and Tlangala we generally would do a stop either at Mitamita or at the Lightning Creek campground. This section here is the long winding section which takes you down to the Lightning Creek rest area.
So there you have it. That's my top 30. Look, I wouldn't get carried away about the order too much. The order's pretty shabby in lots of ways when I look at it again. But, uh, gee, can anyone advise any roads we haven't ridden? which should be up there and that would be great we always love sharing what we've ridden and would love to hear from others what we haven't